Hey there, this is The New Hoodoo, the podcast that helps women transition from religious to spiritual and intuitive. We are the perfect podcast for brand new hoodoos and spiritualists. Are you curious about diasporic and Africana spiritual practices and need help navigating and incorporating your new path into a modern lifestyle? Don't worry, we got you. And hey, even if you're just looking to learn how to use spiritual tools like tarot, candle magic, and folk herbalism, we've got you covered too. I'm your host, Hallie Kuhanna, and right over there is my co-host and little sister and best friend forever, Andy Anderson, and together we are the new hoodoo. Just think of us as your audio guides on this new and very cool spiritual path. So brew a little tea, light those candles, and prepare for this week's magic. Ooh, let's just have a little Mississippi moment. Girl, so I have not, my sleep has been really fucked up. My sleep has been really fucked up. Why is your sleep fucked up? And I had a dream today. It just real quick. Like, what the fuck? So you know how like your sleep is fucked up, but then you like, you know, you read or you scroll or doom scroll or whatever till you fall back asleep, like in the early, early morning. Mm -hmm. Girl, I dreamed about Chris fucking Jenner. I was talking with Chris Jenner about it was like a we were sightseeing someplace in some world city. I and I don't think like you what should the fuck? Why the fuck was I dreaming about pen? I think one is directly related to the other. I don't think you should wake up and then start scrolling and go back to sleep. That's kind of a death nail for me, and that's how you end up with them fucked up cross streams or like your timeline. But I don't follow. Like, I don't follow Chris time? Kardashian. I hate the Kardashian. I don't, I don't follow them. I I mute conversations but they about can them. Be like your manifestation of what the media is. When I think of them and I think of the media, they look like a Kardashian. Like the media, if it was a bad guy in my dreams, it would be them. But the thing was, we were talking about business. Like literally, I was like, hey, Chris, what's going on? How are the Literally, my question was, how are the tra- how are the Kardashians transitioning from their Instagram fame trying to make all of that work on TikTok? Hey, like, why the fuck would I ask that hey, in a pimps. dream? Pimps are likable, but they make money. Iceberg Slip said he was not a likable fellow, but he made money. Like, I would, I'm just like, fuck, am I the kind of person that if I was next to her, like, I don't, I kind of loathe her. But I was like, wow, I was in deep conversation and like Amber Rose, her name. Ter- now, like, I would used to, I would loathe her. Now, I would be terrified of the fucking kind of energy she has around her. Because just your ability to disconnect and sell your children, like. I think that's the disconnect sometimes, well, at least with me as a black woman, like, that's the disconnect with me is like. Because people try to reframe that as, oh, you know, Kim slipped up and you made the most out of a bad situation. That's not what the people say. And not that I always listen to the streets. I feel like the truth lives as a lawyer lives somewhere healthily between what the streets say and what the two main characters that in this yeah. play say. And Ray J is an idiot. Kim Kardashian is a bigger idiot, but with a lethal mom. And that woman is... And, you know, people like look at it from a witch standpoint and she just in her power or whatever. Nah, she got a little dark streak to her. She got she got some dark evil shit to her. So when you sit down and listen to all three of them people. Yeah. And Which you look is at why the receipts of what happened, like paperwork on it. Like not only did she plan that out, like she planned out a part two and a part three. Yeah. And like looked at the second porno video and was like, I don't know. Maybe y'all need to go back and do it. I don't feel like y'all gave it enough. Like, so if she's that kind of chick, then I don't, hey, what, girl, she got a church as a tax write off. A church. Does of she what? really? Yes. And she's had that for forever, girl. That's yeah. how she writes off all this stuff as a, as a nonprofit. So, I mean. Girl, did you see that? Did you see that? Be- it was really a beautiful fucking picture, I think. Like, of, you can uh, have money and not have to have crazy ass energy. Because there was all this, uh, another thing that there was a lot of chatter about on Beyonce's internet was about, um, I think it's why Nita Bynum. It might be another one of these big singers. But girl, she was like straight at her altar. And when I tell you her altar did not look very different from your altar, it but didn't I'll look much you, different than my there, altar. There, and the, and the, and the Saints is mad. Happy. Like, look at Giselle Bunchin and like what that man looked like. <laughs> Somebody put a picture of him on the internet, like, that woman is sucking his soul out. And I was like, Probably. Stephen King wrote a book about it. <laughs> it's called, it's called Thinner. All you had to do <laughs> was bring that check home, be beautiful, and keep your dick at home. And you did. And be on so, ESPN, yeah. one of these million ESPN shows talking about TV or do some. Take your, ass, take your ass, take your ass to places with with Giselle all over the United States, getting more your kids into soccer. Is who you are, and then you have to retire, and you have these mental 
Yeah, they don't know what to do with themselves. I mean, this, that's a problem for a lot of people, I think, she for um, hope. Is so old. It happens. Bless him when he could have just sat the fuck down somewhere. Yeah. Um, and is there any last pop culture I want to ask you about that was like, that was hot? She goes, girl, did you see? Um, I don't know why I got so into this because I think I'm really a fan of this what, girl. I do. Know- you don't want to talk about that? Oh, well, let's talk about that too, real quick, just real hot, quick. What the fuck are people mad about that? First of all, well, I didn't know you could say, make a flute I'm out of glass. History buff. Y'all need to be glad anyone's fucking interested in anything y'all got in the Library of Congress. Much yeah, less I mean, it's, a, it's just it's, want to play a flute. it's PR about the Library of Congress, which is very good because y'all no, don't learn my, fucking my civics. My you don't know how stuff was, works. My first thoughts with Lulo is like, girl, I hope. And if people need, if any rich people need me to travel around and make your space right, I will do it. But the first thing I want to say is I hope you sage that shit. I hope you wash that, that bitch flute. down in Florida water. I Because mm-hmm. I could hear them tell you, you can't touch it with the stringent. I'm like, bitch, then I ain't playing it. I, I ain't playing been, it. I'm gonna be like, I'll look I at it and the, take a picture. I'll take I want picture. the good sanitizer on it, too, because you're right. It's also a hollow fucking vessel. Like, and when you start thinking about, like. Girl, with holes that open and close. You know how band is? Band instruments are nasty. I play the drums. Yeah. I saw y'all yeah. with spitting shit rolling all through y'all's instruments. I have, have to that, I have to imagine that. I have to imagine the thing valve. is. <sighs> That's I have thing. to imagine it's being. I have to imagine it's being. Oh my god, that's personal. Well, they concern. say no one's like, played it so, for two hundred years. Like since the guy who sold it, like it belonged to the president. He had all the shit. And then the guy who sold it to the collection. They say it hasn't been played by anyone in forever. I was like, it would have been played by Lysol. It would have been played by yeah. Procter and Gamble before I put my put mouth, my mouth on, on it. Cause cause but that um, was the first but thing she, I thought. But but of course she played the her. fuck out of it. But like, good for her. And also, it's smart for the Library of Congress. It's good to do that. To, a way to take these things that we're spending money to archive and to make them accessible to the American but people. It was like, so it's funny beautiful. to me. I had my pop moment and I kept thinking about um, American Pie, which was like, in a band camp. Because the one thing I wanted to think about when, when, when people were like, well, why did they get Lizzo to play the flute? I want to be like, name one interesting flute player. You know, I wait. Yeah, that's it. I. <laughs> One. I think it was a girl named Loretta Jenkins in 11th grade that played, I think one of the Wolvertons, I think Keisha Wolverton played the flute. One of, no, um, I think, um, who's somebody I knew that played so the flute? So not did Lizzo like, that's also it. bring you flavor. They're not famous. Like what? Lizzo brings you flavor. She is a classically trained, well accomplished. So like, I want to tell people, you first of all, as Americans, you know, we have to feed y'all at your base, most basic level. Like that yeah. is one thing I want to say. Now let's two nuanced, intelligent African-American women talk. She is an accomplished classical flutist. I don't know if anyone's ever just taken like Google Lizzo playing classical shit on the flute. She's in the phenomenal flute player. Yeah. Like she knows how to play a whole ass instrument. You played the clarinet in high school. Oh God. But thank you for sharing that <laughs> bullshit with the people. Yes. My mama. Oh, you kept trying to get around that. How you played I mean, clarinet in high school. Like a mom played clarinet. Instrument. I played clarinet. Yeah. I, I played a cello at one point. As someone who is That's a cool list instrument. The clarinet is decidedly not cool. <laughs> cello is probably the coolest instrument. I don't instrument. know why you played such un, I don't know why you well, girl, like like our mom let you have a choice with what you I played. Know. I just mm-hmm. had a fit and was like, I'm not fucking playing it. Uh Marilyn, I used to play <laughs> Did you revolt? You refused the clarinet. God damn you. Shout out to older Rory sisters taking these L's. Like, yup. Well, I had to, I had to do my research because she was. We already have a clarinet. I was like, the drum is free. Take <laughs> if you want. It. Don't worry about it. I'm good. All I need is some sticks, and they twelve dollars. <laughs> Tell you what, I'm not gonna do is play the clarinet. Was Generation X the last the generation of like the bougie black kids were all in band? Like seriously, like I remember telling somebody, I'm like, all the all girl, the quote unquote. I don't know why, because it was many our generation black made us females. They played the flute in band. I don't know why they had such a grip on the culture in the 90s. Yeah, uh, yeah. like all and of us were in too. the freaking band. Okay, yeah, everybody was in the band. Oh, well, okay, so the Lizzo and the flute thing. And um, the last thing was the girls fighting again. Like this, So for like, y'all that are listening in the South that said, ooh, did they go to one of them high schools? One of them kind of high schools? We didn't go to, we didn't no, go to a no, 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 no. No, we did not go to Gremlin. We, Light. Our town we was didn't... small enough that we didn't have enough people to like have preferences. Like now, our high school that we went to is like the black high school. Now that they done tipped thirty thousand yeah. people, it is. But then, like everybody went to the same high school, which in the country meant everybody was country. 
Yeah. So what no black folks and white folks. I remember, do you know the year? I think it was the year after I left that they tried to have like a black homecoming court and a white homecoming court. Because could nobody white win homecoming court? Win homecoming, yeah. They tried to do that my senior year. And I was like, yeah, we're not doing that. Mississippi, do, do you think they do, do you think Mississippi gets that there's like the internet and cameras now and that people can see what the fuck it is we're doing? Like what the fuck? A black and white prom Apparently to give not cute. Neither does Texas. Look at this shit they still doing. It's just Girl, pockets like, and place of places of us, like my school district in Cibolo, where it's just intelligent people have come together near near a military base and said, We're not doing that. Like we know that's what the governor say, but San Antonio is one of those cities where in many school districts we have just said, We're not doing that. Yeah, like if y'all want to go do that, y'all can go to these charter schools that have. I and I, I told my husband's like, how do you know? Because I look at a school and be like, mm-hmm, that's mm-hmm. that's that's an old form of conservatism. He goes, how can you tell? I said, if it's got traditional, yeah, leadership, legacy, those types of things in the name. I said, yeah, they're trying to communi- communicate a certain thing. Yeah. I said, now, well, black to- people, we'll have three ways to heaven on the name of our church. The tabernacle gathering place yeah. of praise. I said, but yeah, there are certain kind of audiences where just like, yeah, are those traditional learning schools, legacy schools, those, those pockets of, but yeah. yeah, we just went to one of those traditional country schools. We're yeah. like, yes, there was racism, but like it wasn't enough of us to have like true diversity. One so. of the best teachers both of us had was racist AF. She was like the first person that was a stand for like Republicanism. Like, think of all the MAGA shit now. She like, when, but, and, she but she was a, like, racist. One of the best like stupidity. I don't but think she did she not. Yeah, that's true. She, yeah. she, she, she I don't know, girl, but she was a Republican and traditionalist. Because there was some racist shit that happened in my class. Yeah. Where like she actually was like, Andy, now you you get to stage to say whatever you want to say. Because not only did did he say what yep. he said was outrageous. That's what rude, I'm saying. She was the best was teacher we had. She was but so. Now, yeah. Trump, like she I didn't. She would have had a problem with now ultra conservatism. Absolutely. She would have been all over. She would have been but all like, over. Like stupidity and bad form. No. That's why she couldn't have been no. Trump's support. But she was decidedly racist. But she did demand uh, excellence yes. from us. And I'm yeah. sure it's part of the reason Andy and I, especially Andy. Andy had it was a, a very success. genteel, polite kind of racism. It's hard to explain the kind of racism. No, it wasn't. I would get ready to. It wasn't. I mean, I guess it was intellectually as far to as Mississippi is concerned. People, it was intellectually kind of the politeness of the kind of racism yeah. they had was yeah. different. It was well, I just I'll never forget one of my first reports on choice, like issues of choice in the United States and the history of choice, which I was really excited about. She encouraged me to to write about it. But when it was time for me, she goes, well, Hallie Q's got a, an oral report on baby killers. So come on up, Hallie Q. It's your turn. Like, and I remember, like OK, thank you. Miss. <laughs> like looking at everybody sideways. But she was one of the best teachers we had. Like I made an A in that class and that had a lot to do with. Us getting into the places we got into college. Like, so, but anyway, so that's a Mississippi moment. Those are just reflections on pop culture and being two black women and two hoodoos having grown up in Mississippi. Go ahead, Lizzo, with with the flute. May your breath that you breathe into it reverse the curse. And thank you for making thousands of really dumb white conservative men Google black flutists. This, when we encourage (laughs) people to do flutes, even work. You know, some of them, you know, some of them searches were fucked up. Like, <laughs> who's the last person who touched Can this Negroes flute? even play the flute? Y'all keep setting these intellectual traps for them. I appreciate Because I don't it. believe it. Because it's, it's contaminated now. Or learn <laughs> true history. Lord have mercy. For y'all to keep pissing them off. So keep making Ooh. them mad. Oh, y'all loud and dumb. making them mad too. Well, now let's get started talking about our big topic. Andy has wanted to talk about this topic for two weeks. Well, do we you want to do your tarot pool first? Do we go in the same order or are we just doing it? Let us... I would like to do the tarot pool after you give, okay. you kind of flesh out our why. So, Ooh. y'all, three about three weeks ago, Andy, uh, on Familia with her, with her family, like went to go see The Woman King. She freaking loved it. She was, sending, like, she was sending us gifts. She was talking about it. Hallie, if you're going to go see it, yeah, I'm like, no, nah, girl, I ain't going to see it. I'm probably going to have to see it by myself. Um... Haven't seen it yet. Then Kayla, our sister Kayla, went to go see it. She was raving and raving and raving about it. And finally, Andy, like, circled back. She goes, you're going to do that. You're going to go see this movie so we can talk about it on the podcast or not. Because we're not 
She's like, because if we're not talking about it, we're not being responsible. So I found a beautiful pocket of time. I went to go see the movie. I took in all my favorite snacks. And when I tell you I was crying, Andy, also, I found a little mini notebook to take notes. But I, and I thought, oh, it's so far after the release, I won't have to deal with people. So I can bring my little flashlight. Girl, it was like 25 people in there. So I was trying to take notes. You want to see these, this remedial handwriting. I was writing in the dark. You know your sister can't see. So I got some notes. And there's some definitely some things I want to talk about. But when we talk about our why, I would love for you to give us your why, because Andy was the the fuel in the fuel in the engine here and getting us to all get it together to coordinate to get our asses into the seat theater and see it. And now that I have, I'm so happy. Andy, talk to us about our why with Andy. Take it away. Just because I happened to see the movie and it came out and I thought it was pretty re- relevant. It is not very frequently that we have black people making black movies about black things. And so, you know, of course, I wanted to go see it. But for me, I know a lot about the beadwork and jewelry work that comes from like this part of the country. I also have dabbled and study a lot with Ifa. And so when Kayla saw it, she was like, I've got some questions. Like there's some things in there. So that kind of spurred me to go see it when we went to go see it. So I thought it was important for us to talk about because it's a black female filmmaker that made this. It's an all black female cast that was in this movie you know, headlining the movie. There were black men in the movie, but for most part, it was headlined by black females. Some new up and comers, some that I really like that have been in some some things that I like. So I thought that would be fun for us to talk about. But also because there's a bit of controversy. What would anything be without, you know, not really talking about some of the other side of that coin, which is we always talk about balance, right? With ourselves and our magic. So I think it's important for us to kind of look about the, talk about the other Uh, side of the conversations that people are having around Woman King. And this is basically the role specifically that the Dahomey played in the slave trade, but also the Okoje specifically as an arm of the Dahomey army, some of the treachery that they inflicted upon other Africans, namely Nigerians, right? So we have a lot of stuff to talk about. And Andy, I think, because one of the things you kept saying, and one of the reasons I was like, oh, well, let's definitely talk about it. You were like, why aren't more people talking about this movie? Like, I don't get it. Like, how? And I think it's because people are afraid to kind of dip their toe into any kind of critique or review because there's going to be the, well, actually, like the, well, actually, the historians or the people that in their minds think they're historians, you know, like it would just take it from a, you know, from a critique, it would take it from a pop, you know, review. Do we even care? Like, seriously, I I want everybody to know, like, we're not historians. We we talk about um, reclaiming spiritual and indigenous, like spiritual practices, how to incorporate those practices into your life to live your most amazing, fulfilled and abundant life. Like, I kind of I, it's not that I don't care. I do. But my, I, I feel like this is an unapologetically black show. I'm a black woman. Uh, and there's, there's too much richness in the art, the costumery, the music, the dance. Like, it's not that I don't care. I do. But I, I'm also totally down with an artistic critique. Look, or a review. It's a little bit of both. Cause I'm going to be honest with y'all. I'm really unapologetic. If it's black and I feel like it's for me, especially as a black woman who apps, because let's talk about, let's separate, let's talk about intersectionality. We are black people. We are also black women. How often are black women made to be the centered audience in any got that damn thing? So put it like this. If it's for black women, I'm buying it. I'm supporting it. I'm kind of here for it. I'm I'm talking about it and I'm not going to be afraid to talk about it. Like, I'm kind of yeah. one of those people, like, there are certain stuff that you're going to always, like, are you always, like, to people, you politically always going to vote for black people? If I can, unless they, <laughs> tell, unless they fuck it up for themselves, I'm going to try to. Um, I said, but then there's some things they could do to, to fuck it up for themselves. Like, if it's, but if it's for black women, I'm here to support it till y'all fuck it up for me. So, for the most part, yeah. And I'm going to be unapologetic about that because that's how the world is about themselves. And we have to change. We have to love ourselves enough, black women. So, yes, I will support to you to you fuck it up for yourself. And that's therapy. That's therapy. Okay, this is a Mississippi moment. Just real quick, going back into black history. Andy is referring to a moment in time when somebody in our small town, and we're a political family, our mom's politician. So, in a in kind of a, you know, in a public figure, figure back in a little town we grew up in. And there was another prominent black person that was running for office and we knew the family very like as intimately as our family even got to know other families really but we really knew them like went to school with the kids like 
they were some of the only kids. You know how your parents, like, you can only hang out with, like, you know, certain kids, like other parents or people to go to churches. Like, I know. And they, this person decided to run for office. And Andy was ethically, like, not outraged, no, but he like. He didn't decide to run for office. He got paid by the only white guy. This white guy who knew that was the only way he was going to beat me paid this motherfucker's 50 I was talking about something else, dollars. girl. I wasn't talking about, I wasn't talking oh, about student I'm council. Sorry. I was talking about um, oh, when bad. you were like, because um, the I campaign. I you, Kobe Watson, you bitch. Cause so, I know. Oh I'm my sorry. God. That was Go the great upset story. of, that was a great upset of, what was that, 1991 or 92? It had Hattiesburg High School. No, girl, this Ooh, was a that local. that better than that one. When was this one? Girl, this was manipul- the man, um, municipal office. And I'm not going to say who it is because I know people from our town listen to the podcast Mm, but the person decided to run for office and because we knew the family we knew the sisters girl we went to school with the sisters um celebrate good times come on you know who i'm talking about so um one of the parents decided to run for office and like they wanted us like like oh you know i want you to go help with so-and-so's campaign and andy was like Wait a second. I don't even know if I'm behind this campaign. <laughs> this is a bullshit. Now, listen, we want to vote the race, but you ain't always got to vote your race. <laughs> like, we know these people are suspect. <laughs> what you mean? We supporting this. <laughs> what you mean? Anyway, so that's an old, that's an old event. I digress. Anyway, so. What I was also making a comment on is like, let's not, you know, it's a difference when we support our folks for the sake of supporting our folks, but let's not. How can I put it? Let's not believe our own press. Like, yeah. let's not make them into who they are, right? Like, we, we may we... support them because they know they represent the community. That don't make them intelligent. Mm-hmm. That don't make that don't make them a reader of books or a discerner <laughs> of things or a strategist or in any way mentally capable of complex ideas. Correct. To say, especially enough to solve <laughs> complex in a way that issues. will lift other people up yes. in a way that will like raise the boat. Because hope was that person was going to also bring with him. People who were intelligent that knew how to do these jobs. Mm -mm. What he did is he cleaned off the deacon bench, which was different (laughs) because ain't none of them suited to run (laughs) basic municipal offices. Oh, my God. To address the needs of black people in Mississippi. Like, God. No, girl, not even the needs of black people. Just basic needs of everything. (laughs) Water. Girl. You know, ticketing. Oh, those were... Those were those Civil were tough. Anyway, I'm sorry. Service. I had yeah. to I had to put that one in there. Let's get started. First of all, just give us a like overall impressions. I really loved it. I really did. Like I'm not gonna say if I'm gonna give it a ten, but that was a solid eight or nine. And talk about hitting all the sweet spots. Like even in the opening sequence, because like we like period pieces, right? And so it's like when I went to go see what was another really good period piece that I liked that told the story of a really powerful woman. Um, Elizabeth, the gold. Yes, page. that was like another that fine one, fine one, fine film. No bass series, and she got robbed that year um, too by Gwyneth Paltrow so, and Shakespeare in Love. And Golden yeah. Age, I wasn't even prepared to like, but still, kind of still liked it too, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think there are ways, like, because we know the ending. It's kind of like this with Star Wars, right? When you talk, when you start, like, are you talking about real Star Wars, or when you get off into this imagining what happens next? Um, I'm a Marvel girl, so y'all know for me, like there are comic books that tell these stories, but then we allow artists to interpret different things. When you look at the Dahomey, when you look at the kingdom of Ifa, Eve, Eve, when you look at these, a lot of these huge kingdoms that kind of um, anchor the coast of West Africa, first of all, you're talking about a continent that is huge. To say that white West Africa is a microcosm of what we are as Black people is dumb. Right. Just like white people try to say, oh, Egypt isn't y'all right. You aren't black. You know how that feels like dumb and not natural to you. Like we can't take this movie first and have this conversation because even when I studied of Ifa, I was like, oh, when you follow the roots, because I was following the roots of hoodoo and voodoo back to Africa. And they really only. And then when you start talking about hoodoo and voodoo and Ifa, when you go to Africa, people tell you like, oh, girl, like voodoo is a whole religion that that takes up a whole, you know, Ifa is a whole religion that a kingdom practice in this part. And even that is only this one, it's like looking at California to the country saying that California represents who we are as Americans. So I think it's important. And I kind of understood that dichotomy. I think sometimes as black people, we understand that because we're always telling white people like Africa is not a country. 
it's a continent of hundreds of countries. The same thing when you talk about this type of thing, when you talk about West Africa, to tell a Dahomean story, right? Or to tell a story that has Ifa in it, or to talk about the Igbo from Nigeria. These are very fluid. They don't match into these little boxes sometimes that are very Europeanized. How can you help me say the words? Our very European lenses fit into it. I was wondering where they were going to start because there's like no story. Like this fighting group has existed for hundreds of years. So like, where are you going to start? There's no story about them. We don't know any pre-existing story. So I think to, I think to kind of, when I kind of got the point of where they were intersecting on the slave trade, like, oh, slave trade's just getting ready to, to open up. Yeah. Right. Dutch are really just getting in here, realizing what a black market this is. Black folks may not all the way understand the yeah. insidious nature of the tra- slave trade. So yeah. once I situated all that in my mind, I felt better about the story. I'm actually glad that all that didn't take place, like right at the beginning of the film. I'm kind of glad you had to figure that out because I think it, I think it would have played us dumb to set this picture that says this is 1820. This is the Dutch. They just got here. Like they didn't treat us like an audience that wasn't complex and nuanced. So that's what I'm going to say about that. That opening to me made sense. And I'm like, well, I just I just thought it was so visually beautiful and stunning the way you kind of walked into first the 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 beauty and the color and the laughter and the chatter of the marketplace. It's like you were it's like you were walking into the village and then into and then to see the the palace and especially the beautiful symbolic decoration of the, you know, which let you know that cattle is the way that wealth is held. And so of course there's like, you know, calling to I forget the name of the goddess, especially in ancient Egypt, that would have like the 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 the, the bull's horns, the horns like on her head. Was it Hathor? Mm-hmm. Hathor, like with the bull horns, so you saw them, like you know, outlining the outside of the palace, and then you're taken into the palace, and it's just so stunning and beautiful. I think in period pieces, of course, we get all this stuff, like you know, like the big Rococo design, like how gorgeous the palace of Versailles is, or some palatial home. Like I really love that, and I also loved the beauty and the banter of the marketplace. And in African traditional religions, like the marketplace is, you know, like it's its own. It's its own place of its own special people, place of magic. I think it was important for them to start that way because I don't pe- I don't think people fundamentally understand Africa and connect it to wealth and abundance. Yeah. And kingdoms. When you think about us in history, that's pretty much kind of like a revolution of what the seventies and eighties when Thelma start coming on good time saying we were kings. Yeah. Yep. That is a yep. recent coming to yeah. belief of us and, and now, you know, validation through history and us learning things. But yeah. when you go in and to see the structures that we have built, and I haven't traveled to Africa yet myself personally, how like he has, yeah. but even when you see structures that are replicated here, or yeah. when you watch it on video or you watch it in movies, it is, we are always given this kind of, and I hate to say it, this starving Africa help feed the children type kind of yeah. imagery that we've been barded with since children. Think about how often yeah. you've seen that feed the children commercial and you're growing up. Yeah. Like you. yeah. And, yeah. and think so about the times. pictures that we've been giving of the continent of Africa to go back to this time period and understand like, no. Even yeah. prior to, like you've always come from kings and look at the, and we're not talking about kings we're talking about kings on the grandeur are greater than Europe. Yeah. And these structures that you've always known, right? Yeah. Um, so I love that that was the opening. But to also, I'm like you, to not just pick up on like the bustling, rich commerce of the place. Mm-hmm. But I also very quickly zeroed in on the visuals of like the shapes and the textures of what our culture yeah. feels like. Because we are colorful, yeah. And we are texture based and metal yeah. based. So I can't help but to be drawn to like the tiles and yeah. the attention to what the meaning of those symbols played in over and over in the movie. So yeah. I mean, we can talk about that later, but I do can get I, to the visual notes about that. Were really cool. And the, the, and speaking of which, and, and about speaking of how as children, like those kind of first lessons, like we were taught about, oh, everything in all the nations of Africa is, is, is just intrinsically fucked up. The Agoji are coming back into, so that's the, the beautiful viewpoint we get there, coming back into town after being successful at a, at a nighttime ambush, which was badass. Like literally they rise up out of the swaying grasses like at night and fuck up. 
a village, you know, fuck up a village. And so they're coming back victorious in war. And the thing that like caught my heart, I love this. And we saw this at the beginning of um, Fort Salem, like the great Hulu show. Um, what's it called, Andy? Something Fort Salem. Because, but they're they so excited. It's like the them. rock stars are coming through and it's like they want to look, they want to look at their, they want to look, but they're shy. But like one of the go, you know, like catches their eye and like winks at them, like a stand moment and the kids like lose their shit. Like when that I love stuff. That point that they stopped I love that conversation with the elder and the elder was like, no, we don't look at them because we fear them. Yeah. Right. We look at them as a sign of respect. As a sign of respect. And so and, these women warriors coming in with this show of respect for how fierce and beautiful they are. Like I was like, oh well, I'm prepared to love it. Like this is this is this beautiful warrior spirit and archetype being. I was like, so I'm here for it. I'm ready for it. That uh prepared me for that. And then enter our protagonist, right? Like we, of course, we see the general in consultation with our beautiful our beautiful king. Yeah, John yes. Boyega, who we all who we all know and love, and with um, his tight little <laughs> afro, his beautiful <laughs> tight afro, him. with and his the, and, gorgeous curly afro. Now I will say. Because, Halaki, you say, of course, like, enter the protagonist. I think what was jarring about that scene is... I meant, I meant Niwe, but but I didn't hit, quite... You see the crowd preparing Nawi, apparently Nawi. for this great, like, march of soldiers, like, coming back on their return. Mm-hmm. I guess you don't expect to see this type of honor centered upon women. So yep. for me, it kind of it kind of threw me off center. But you also hear them kind of having this conversation. And I don't want to be complete spoiler, but you also see... That there is like, yeah, this is the community coming home. But then there's also just two women having a conversation, yeah. which was the part that I like before we broke into going behind the scenes where they just kind of were like, this is all kind of ridiculous. Right. Yeah. Like even in the midst of all this pomp and circumstance, I love that it level set. And I was like, oh, shit, because we're still all black women in the seat of all this. Because when you think about pomp and circumstance, a lot of that shit is very masculine energy. So I was also wondering like how, what they were going to do with that very masculine and feminine energy. But I'd love to see also to get kind of like her first glimpse of her personality, even before she was in the room with like a man was with her sister kind of going like, this is kind of ridiculous. Like she was yeah. not that kind of leader, right? Like she, the adoration was there, but it wasn't the reason why she did it. I thought that not was too important much. to say about her character. Cause like she was a leader, but she was also like, this is a lot of bullshit. What did you think of the House of Women that we were shown so early on, like the going in and going to the House of Women, seeing the Major Domo, who I'm struggling to find this actor's name. He was one of my favorites. I assume he must have been the head eunuch and head of household. Like he was oh, in and of he himself. Was like a diviner, the one in purple. I felt like he was like a priestess. Are you talking about that one? The one that was in all purple that was two spirits? Yes, 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 yes. The ma- I, I, I called him the like major. I felt like he domo. was the keeper of women, but I also felt like he was also a divine because you notice, like he was also with the queen, and he was and bald, women. right? Which generally means so like I an felt initiate. like he, he it was more than like a eunuch's role, like the guards who actually kept people out. I felt like he had more of a which noted the purple. I think he had more of a he was supposed to have more of a spiritual. I don't know. I was trying to figure him out because to be two spirits, I was like, okay, that makes sense. Well, I didn't clearly, think of him you, as a you, eunuch. Clearly, you saw and understood his rank because to me, he was like in charge of the house, but also he was in such a position of leadership that he could also tell the real housewives of Dahomey about themselves. Like, the you know, like Miss Beautiful. Yeah, because goodness, the wives were so beautiful, like so beautiful each in their own way. But I also love the way he was very much like, yeah, like he was like, he He was like, well, she won territory for him. So, you know, she does something. You yeah, know, right. like, Instead so of, of course he, because uh, he does, the king has so much open affection and respect. And we'll get into the talk about like the the balance of the divine masculine, and divine feminine, and, and you know, the, the whole concept of the woman king and how. But that concept of like the wall behind the wall, especially since they were celibate. You know, if you look at a lot of different, when you look at a lot of different stories across different cultures, because I think about like memoirs of a geisha. Yeah. Or, you know, these places where you have these inter sanctums in kingdoms that are supposed to be all women places. Mm-hmm. Girl, now that I'm 47 and I'm getting to this place in my life, I'm like, oh, yes, girl. Like, is there a place? Is there such a like there were six of us as sisters and we fought so hard to get out of that very woman space. And now that I live in a very male centered space, it kind of also was like, oh, so that means it's safe. That yeah. also means that they can have this kind of sisterhood. But at the same time, I've also lived amongst just women. Yeah. 
And so this is also another thing about this whole movie is this balance between like, oh, they're weak women warriors. I'm like, then you don't know women very well. Yeah. Like yeah. If, if this, if, if the premise of this movie didn't make sense to you, yeah. then you, you've never either been in a house with women or you don't understand women yeah. very well. Cause they're right. They're very fierce creatures, Yeah, but it's just in, so I was, I was waiting to see whether it was going to be like this, this paradise lost of my dreams yeah, or whether or not yeah. it was going to roll out to be, I don't want to say this catty place. Cause I think that undermines how women interact with each other, mm-hmm. where it was going to be emotional warfare, really physical warfare. I was glad yeah. to see as a story goer, it actually was physical warfare because physical warfare we could deal with. Right. But yeah. it wasn't a world where there was going to be emotional warfare. So yeah. In Unless that, you count, Unless you count the, is it Jamie, Jamie Lawson? And also, I just want to say to you before we go too far, Lashana Lynch that played Izoji. God, she played the fuck out of the role. She was so beautiful in that. But, you know, we had like Queen, you know, we had Queen Shantae, like badass, unbelievably beautiful, giving us all kinds of, you know, giving us those shoes. But you see how easily I wrote her into the beeline of the story. I'm like, but it's not. Totally. (laughs) But she was keeping up a little mess. She was keeping up a little mess in the House of Women. She tried to. She She kept up some mess. But I also want to say that as y'all go watch this movie, because please go watch the freaking movie. Like, let there's a place for in a you know there's a place for historical accuracy and critique. But again, like I'm looking at this as art. Like there were just so many beautiful elements. Like, and we can get to um to our young, you know, we can get to our young protagonist and the initiation and the young so girls being brought in and white. Yeah, and so because we we don't want to like travel through the whole storyline of the movie yeah. with you, but like her as a queen, right? So yeah. you've got this warrior. Like structure. The king has people who he keeps in his council. He is married. Yep. This woman that we talk about is the queen. She also lives in the yeah. in the land that of, of women or the palace of women. And is in and a position of influence. Like she's, she's in, in a position of influence a, too. A, she is the equal to because it kind of tells this story loosely of this idea of there is the king, but there is someone that can be elevated to this role that is his, his that balance. Because Nephi, it's all about balance, right? And they talk about Maui and Lisa, which these are two gods that represent the sun and the moon that balance out and share power. And they are both a male and a feminine spirit. So mm-hmm. very much at the root of some of the kind of imagery from that country, not just, just, not just Dahomey, because even that Maui and Lisa – is like kind of an interplay of some parts of Ifa and, and like where you're from and where you practice Ifa. But anyway, those two spirits is about a balance of male spirit. So the idea is that there will be a woman king, right, which will serve along him. And you notice I didn't say queen because the woman king wasn't necessarily bound to like in European society, like um, marriage, or lineage, or some type of blood. It, it it was she who served the community with the same reverence, with the same level of service and sacrifice of the king. And so the king would select who that female person would be who would rule beside him. Naturally, his wife could be one of those selections. I don't want to interrupt you, but I figure I, I think it was good to know who the players are. So she could be naturally one of those people to be revered and selected. And then you have our our woman king, right, who is this, she leads this very fierce legion of fighting soldiers amongst his army. So not his regular army. These are his, you know, people compare them to the Dora Milaje in the Marvel. When you watch a documentary, I'm going to tell you about it at the end of this. I think that's an unfair comparison, but this is like his his lethal fighting force, right? Your Green Berets, your special forces. My husband's in the military, and so is my son. They're going to kick my butt for saying that, right? Like those types of lead. They're especially fierce and close to the kings. So we're introduced to our Ray, our little Luke Skywalker, Nawi, and we see a little bit of her story. We don't know everything, but we know that she is not fitting into the typical role that her parents have for her. We, you know, we're first introduced to her. Her parents are bringing a suitor. We can tell her parents are stressed as fuck about presenting the suitor, like her stressed as fuck about presenting the suitor. Um, the suitor makes it known that he wants a you know a quiet, obedient, freaking hardworking wife. And anyway, let's just say hands are thrown. Um, now he gets pissed, like fights back, levels him, and that's a rat. The dad is so mad he offers her up in service. 
to the king. And we see, you know, we see the girls that are about to be, in, you know, initiates, the new recruits into the Agoji. And anytime we see any kind of initiation, it's always beautiful. It's why, you know, folks listen to this podcast, I think might enjoy it as a piece of art. So we're introduced to this new, this new class of recruits. And you kind of find out the character set up. And so here are your new players. I liked her as a young actress. It made sense to me for a female army. Like when you're trying to make sense, like who ends up in this kind of role, right? Like these kamikaze type kind of warriors that, you know what I mean? Are kind of the head of community. Cause when I just look, I have boys in my house. I understand this nature to want to kill and choke people out. But for me, I have to raise up a lot of energy for that. <laughs> I know there are some people. Is that what a lot of that is that like being the- <laughs> Maybe is that why you uh, uh, boy moms are so maligned? Because y'all are really trying to keep people from We're really injuring trying to keep and maiming each kids. other. Okay, exactly. Damn, oh, y'all oh. are living a different life than this girl life over here. Like, or either, or, or there are those because I just fell into a dark hashtag on TikTok this weekend. Are there those boy moms that are all in it and are like warrior crying or using it to put on animal pelts and kill people too and take scouts? I'm just the kind of boy mom that's like, how much? Uh, of the lords of the goddesses lettuce can I use to help bring this energy down because this is not healthy no one should want to kill and destroy things all the fucking time but as a female it's kind of how I uh, you can turn anything into an idol right you think oh like man carefree stuff they could just kind of be funky and smell bad Do it. well no nah, there's a lot of fucking self-destructive energy that's around them right and so for me when you talk about someone who has to be lethal like this because when y'all see this opening sequence my sister she ain't the action person when i tell you like there's only one fight i done seen in college and you know who you are there was this girl in in college everybody was scared of that girl was from new york yeah yeah and she, people should have been scared of her she, people should have been scared from her why would mean you was, always running into shit with these women from girl, new york when we was in college damn this group of friends I was with, and I was always one of them kind of folks that was like, y'all, we go to these white people's school. Y'all ain't bad about it. Like, y'all just are not, but y'all need to stop acting like you're bad about it because you're not. That girl stepped up at this. She got to talking bad to this girl, and I knew it was a bad idea. Don't go to this party. I was like, let's just get a six pack and go anywhere else but where this party was. Let's go to this party. That girl, st- she was talking shit. That girl stepped up out that smoke like a Wu-Tang video gave birth to a Bruce Lee movie. Just out of nowhere. And that girl is six feet tall. You know how hard it is to be stealthy when you a big bitch? I bet you sank back she into that huge. background. Like, yeah. Girl, like, oh and not only did I sink back, I was like, <laughs> the dude what that I was messing doing? around at the time was sitting on the sidewalk. He was like, ain't them your girls? I was like, I don't even fight like that. I was like, I even, I was like, I don't even like her like that. <laughs> the one girl that talked all that shit, I was like, because you had a choice to take your ass home. Last party we was at, she let you get in the car and drive home, and you chose to drove over here. She was not. Nah, you walked into that ass with me, and she gave you one. The Okoje in this first, I look that when I saw the scene, I said, I don't know what y'all did. I don't care. I don't yeah. care what y'all did to him. It's about it to be over. Not. It's about to be a wrap. They rose up out of them bushes. Like they had been there their whole life, like water worlds, like they just had always been there. And when you got to see how they fought, like in a lot of fight scenes, people are like, oh, you're whooping ass. There's a lot of nuance, though, into looking how fighters, the different and diverse ways that fighters are whipping your ass, because it you understand that women are smaller than men. Right. Mm-hmm. You understand, especially like in. It's the 1800s, right? There's limited ways yeah. that you're going to be able probably to fight someone in Africa. Yeah. You got swords, you got spears, right? You got arrows. And you have gunpowder, but right, people but are still, they're kind gun. of muskets. Like they're kind of, right? It does, it did they're help place manual. things in context. Like you got, yeah. you got, it takes a long time to load them. You got to have tools. It's not a very yeah. like, middle of the night type kind of attack. They are using their ex- lead press on nails to kill people. Oh like God. they are jumping so on beautiful. people's shoulders and breaking necks. Yeah. It is. It was. I tell guys like if you're looking for. I think when you think of the movie Three Hundred, do you ever see the movie Three Hundred? Of course. I love when that you movie. talk about CGI and just like girl, the 
blessing of just bodies and fighting oh like and loin the cloths. gorgeousness of men, but the ferocity uh, of them and like slow motion and action. That combined is my with, level. with with mythology, like in legend. That's my of, Scorsese of like mm-hmm, fighting yep, scenes, yep, right? Is it yep. 300 no right yeah, no, no. but for you to understand like how the fuck do these women accomplish whooping up on men's asses to the point that they're elite level fighters yeah it has got 300 level aspirations yeah because in that one scene it kind of had to make it believable to you yeah that this lethal fighting force could come in and just run shop over a group of men. And I believed it. I don't know about you, Q. Did they sell yeah. it? Like it wasn't, you get what I'm saying? Like with 300, it wasn't the same cinematography. Yeah. She didn't have $20 million. She didn't have CGI. She didn't have a fast binder. You yeah. know, what's his name? He didn't have a, she didn't have a fuss bucket, like in slow motion for three yeah. frames. Like, so it's different, but to take, cause she made this comment about making the choice to go to South Africa because she was like, I wanted them to have a 360 when they were fighting. I wanted them to feel like they were there. I wanted them to understand what it was, what it was like to fight in the 1800s yeah. and to be in this element. And they talked about how fucking yeah. hot it was and to be in leather. Yeah. So to understand like how fast they were in all this leather, how yeah. light and quick on their feet they had to be. And not only that, cute, like fucking quiet. Oh, yeah. Halfway during the fight scene, he was like, these bitches ain't said nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the three of us can't go into a house without making no. a, ton, a ton of noise. I, w- I would have dropped three things. Like, I I would have run into something. Um, you all right? You all right? We would have been in the dark. Yeah, yeah. Hallie, you shut the fuck up. Hallie, <laughs> can you be quiet? Megan, where are you? <laughs> I didn't bring my stuff. Keep up. I didn't bring my stuff. So, so when I say that to say that, and that, so they had to sell it and make you understand how it was possible. Yeah. So for me, I think they did that. I don't know. What was your comments on the fight scene? Because I think as a Marvel, oh, fan, I, I hate, that I hate people. Yeah, that kind of breakdown. I hate battle scenes, and um, in general, like um, Andy's like, what? I was like, yeah, girl, girl, girl like I don't like but battle you scenes. Destructive. I know. I <laughs> Miss Return of the Sith. No, I don't like go to the Star scene. Wars exhibit. I'm like, yeah, I like, want justice and light. I like my I whole like, group. Yes. I like I decisive like victories won early on by a mass overpouring like uh-huh. a force in real life. But I thought it was exactly what you said. I thought it was that scene was brilliant in that it showed, oh, this is how this elite force of women who, of course, strong, fierce, Considering where battle technology was at that point with the, you know, with the muskets and the freaking cannibal, like how they could have such an amazing edge. And it was amazing. And it's a beautiful archetype. I think the the woman warrior as archetype is absolutely amazing. And for somebody like me, it was brief enough. It didn't feel like it went on and on and on. And- but wait, and I had to lean over to my Leo, and my yeah. son. And remind him, like, and I wanted to yell in the th- theater, so I'm gonna say it like I wanted to say it to my four. I did not say this to my fourteen year old. This bitch is fifty seven, fifty something years old. <laughs> She's looking hot. This bitch is crazy. Oh, the body, sixty. Oh my goodness! And it was a kind of movie where, when you see the the beauty of the actors and the actresses, like first of all, wasn't a spare ounce of nothing on nobody. It the was hair. all muscle. The hair, the muscle, the face, the bodies, legs, the bodies, the hips. costumery that went along so beautifully. Like the the actress that played the way Viola they oiled Davis's their skin sister with palm oil, so you couldn't get your hands yeah. on. Like everything about the fight sequence was amazing. It was and and just the diversity of the beauty. Like it was the kind of thing where you'd look at like the different warriors' fightings and be like, oh, maybe she's that everything about her says Massa. Mm-hmm. Like or maybe she's her people streets. are she from Ooh, where you her the people from? International version. I'm giving you the street. Mm-hmm. Like, Ooh, she from where the she come from? Look Somebody at her. Did like, something to her. She carries it was, pain. Oh my god! It was so yeah. It was so beautiful. It's impossible, and we're not. We're gonna get into maybe the like just the the dance and the song, like whether it was preparing for war, celebrating yeah. after war. But Andy, can we talk about? Because now is the time for the tarot pull. And what I pulled, I was like, oh, like okay, right. I forgot the tarot pull. Like Andy, so this means you probably don't want to talk about this, but there are two things we have to talk about. We have to talk about the divination because I thought about you so much 
when Viola Davis's character, the woman King, like did divining and she didn't want to divine. Like I was like, that's exactly why Andy don't like to divine because you divine and you find shit out. And then the next thing you know, you find yourself walking through what the divination was and she doesn't like that. But before we get into that, Andy, there's a love story that's a part of this, like two young people like in love. And so our tarot card pull is the two of cups. This is my Which two- was a cautionary tale. In my totally opinion. a cautionary tale. <laughs> I dubbed the young man the second I saw him. I was like, of course, he's from fucking Brazil. I was like, all right, of course, like team light skin come in, fucking up the program. Ponce de la Negro coming through. <laughs> like we got and a little look, bit of I didn't love story. E- I didn't know either one of these two actors, but like apparently it is a big thing with the millennials because uh, they're two. Ro- like there was one played in, I think the slave master played in this movie called or a show called After. And then there's this guy. And like, when you look at their Instagram profiles, which I'm so glad I did not do before I saw this movie, because it would have ruined it for me. Like, they're apparently like, when I say, I don't think, I know what emo is to the young people. They would be in our equivalent, Carol, from our, um, I can't even say like Prince, though, because like Prince is very... Like tie They're neck. androgynous. Like a, is that the word I'm looking for? Like they just. Oh, totally. I don't want like to little, say like um, soft because that's such a masculine. No, yeah. Type like Timothy Chalamet. Very, they just, they just romantic yeah, and like, willowy yeah, and, a, like and they pretty. Are not. So all the black folks are like, girl, like it is just too much for me to see like Mr. Willow come here like, oh, you look good, girl. Let me squeeze it. Like everybody had this interpretation of it of that. So yeah. it's funny that you show that card about the lovers, even I think in the pop witch world, like when you think about those two folks playing this role. So I just want But the to funny thing about the, the tarot card having to do with that is – and the and the tarot card, y'all, is the two of cups. If you go to your deck and you pull it out and look at it, this is the kind of thing when people are dating at a love reading, they love to see this card because this means it's the very beginning of a new, you know, emotional relationship. And the two characters are very be- are very interesting. The more traditional, like the more traditional he male character, like in the card. He's full of like this romantic love. He's wearing a he's wearing a garland of roses, um, an animal skin, which kind of shows his like the more like just kind of physical, chemical, more fire, heat, romance version. And she is dressed in more kind of um like the color blue. Her robes look a little bit more ethereal. Um, she's wearing a crown, not of flowers, of laurel leaves, which is the crown of the victor, the crown of the warrior, the crown of the athlete. I Means she's a winner. Like she she she's a she's a fighter. Fighter, she achieves, she accomplishes. So I think it's a very, very appropriate card to kind of tell y'all that too is is badass and as wonderful as this movie is. It shows our main character, our protagonist, who's a fierce fucking warrior, who's the girl, like all protagonists. Like she doesn't exactly fit in. She's not going, you know, she's beautiful. She has parents, but she doesn't want to go the role and the way of the wife. And she's the warrior, but she's still a whole person. There's still earth, air, fire, and water in her. And there's that love and that attraction to the, to the, to the dude from Brazil who comes in, who Andy's but frowning about. But there was about a love story love too. Story though, Cause when you think about that love story, everyone thinks about the guy, but I think in, a, in most human stories, like that becomes the center story, but it really was the distraction from this love story of these two women. Yeah. Right. Because the protagonist before she met, you know, Mr. Brazil 2023. I told you Rico saw it. Yeah. Had mm-hmm. been through some rough shit. Like the, yeah. the general assumed she was just there because she was rebellious and willful. And she was like, no, my I was actually a, a orphan. I was found to be lacking. So my husband, you know, my dad decided to sell me off to the highest bidder and they were all shits. Right. So like I'm carrying yeah. a lot of pain, which is a legitimate painful story and then you end up learning that she has a strong connection to the general right because you find out that this really strong powerful general through her service which if nothing else like is every and we're going to talk about the controversy around the movie in a minute so even take all of that out of it like take all of the history and whether or not you think that about the film out of it as a film writer take these two very real stories one of a girl who was an orphan, who because she was rebellious or had a rebellious spirit, was immediately sold off in a marriage to older, more terrifying men. Then you got the story of this really powerful general through her service who had a very traumatic act of rape through the course of her job. 
right? And who's forget, going to battle yeah. against her rapist? Like, right? Yeah. So, and and forget that there's a lens of like just us and women in service and being a warrior and like that always being a vulnerability, even in our history of what we know, African women in that continent. Still, we know the very essence of their womanhood is still seen as a legitimate and valid spoil of war. You hear me? We don't, you, we, we just now as women are coming to understand that fear with Roe versus Wade, but this is on a continent where women, that's still a day to day fear. Yeah. Like, Ooh, somebody may cut my ankle when I'm going to the car. Oh yeah. And somebody may rape me as an act of political violence. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a, that's something they live with. Yeah. That is, that is, I, I hate to say it like people, that's why people get pissed off who are black and brown women when y'all use this imagery of Roe versus Wade and some of the shit so nonchalantly yeah. because there are women that that is a true reality of that. Right. And so I'm talking about now and something that they depicted in history. But I think even just as a filmmaker outside of the historical reference to be able to pull out those two stories and to try to tackle those in a way that made sense, because I want to remind people that this movie is breaking records because it's trying to categorize itself as an action movie. This isn't a Marvel movie. This isn't yeah. a this isn't a superhero movie. It's a historical reference movie, but it's also a movie that is telling a fictional story about two women, two very powerful black women yeah. and trauma and being mothers and daughters. It's it's yeah. it's very auspicious. It's doing a lot. Yeah. But I think this is one of those things that I think that we we dismiss in this movie that I think is unfair by boiling it down to was it accurate and blah, 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 blah. Okay, well, forget all that. Did it start telling us a story that isn't often told? I don't think we hear this story a lot. What no. is it like to be a victim of rape, not to have a choice about whether or not you have to keep that child because it's the 1800s? Mm -hmm. You're also branded to military service that requires that you be celibate. So all these women had to be celibate by choice. I don't know if you forgot that tidbit in the movie. Yeah. But then you find out that you are pregnant through no fault of your own. And then you have to find a way to do something with a kid that's female, first of all, when it's born and unwanted. Yeah. What yeah. do you do? And, and and the one thing that caught me at this point in the movie and my voice hit just like because I'm like, fuck, there are women. I felt like that 30 years oh. ago. Oh, girl. Uh, likewise. Ditto the fuck like yeah. what what is wrong in our world where that was the 1820s and it's now 2023 and i remember it, distinctly in my life where i felt that way yeah and had to make a choice like yeah. my options were different than hers were yeah. in the middle of the woods with just a friend along yeah and options for all women in our lifetime i cannot fucking believe this have been cut by half like exactly. half the women in this Think country in 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 the last in the last season, which is why I think this another reason this last season has been so fucked up for so many of us, and so many crazy things have happened. Yeah, like yeah, half the women in this country so are going to be facing the same thing. That's just one nuance of it. But then then the, the conversations of we don't all had that conversation in Ani in the bathtub where she wanted to slap you across your face because you talk about yeah. shit you don't know. Yeah. You know, and we've also had aunties telling you that story, not knowing your own pain that you carry. Right. Yeah. So I think yeah. there was these amazing moments that I don't want to hold filmmakers less accountable to being historically accurate. But part of me wants to say, like, why we got to be the ones that's got to be out the gate the most accurate. We don't hold live to that level of. Oh, scrutiny. my God. Are you kidding? And, me? and yeah. let's not ignore this black woman figuring out how to tell these complex ass black stories why don't we look at her like i did after the movie i was like let me as i'm listening to arg these arguments let me look at her resume and see can i give her yeah. the benefit of the doubt does she have a catalog that represents diversity yeah. did she go to a school and work with communities in oakland and san francisco where she you yeah. know what i mean does it look yeah. like she is qualified has she done the work to has she had the life experience to, to be able to okay because let's be honest, y'all, we have got some historical moments in time that very much like white people, we could choose to rewrite and whitewash and tell through a certain lens. And some of y'all may feel that's still the case. I challenge you then, and this is what I will always say, Lupita Nyong'o was supposed to play one of the roles, the number two, right, to Viola Davis in this movie, who critically acclaimed, side note, we're going to talk about all these women were beasts. So Academy Awards, yes. Awards, yes. All the awards, all the things. You should just show up with your bags, ladies, and just open them up and get the awards. So that's how I feel about your acting. 
But as a part of being selected for the role that she eventually turned down, she went to Medine and she studied what the legacy of the Kokoje was in real life and decided not to do the movie because it's very conflicted as a fighting force. They were their their lethal nature was used for things that we cannot always associate with the greater good. It is not a truth factually that they were against the slave trade. It's actually a fact that they profited from it. And when I say profited from it, I mean, when you talk about in modern day times, when you talk about the slave trade, these kingdoms on the coast of West Africa were strategically placed because of the ability, like the the location they had as a shipping hub, right? Because to get to Africa was exceedingly difficult. Many people died. Africa is a long way away, right? But to actually be able to get into that kind of area of somewhat calm water enough to establish trade and to be able to take large numbers of people from the interior of Africa, just position them really well to do this work. To the point that the slave trade, it started off with local groups right there, Oats to the Coast, which is kind of in the time frame that you start seeing this movie. But it moved deeper within the interior to these kingdoms where we're taking slaves from deep from the interior of the country and in inducting them into the transatlantic slave trade. There's no question about that. This army was used against neighboring countries as a pretext to be able to go in and take slaves to supply Dutch and English shippers who needed this currency of people to support a lot of the riches that you see were enjoyed by these kingdoms on the coast of West Africa. That's just fact. That is a very, and there's several documentaries outside of this one that Napita did that talks about this mixed legacy of these great armies of these kingdoms, because these are rich cities that show kind of showcase the best of our skill and the best of our culture. They were based on an industry that was in cities. To me, instead of balking at these stories, I think it's important for us to take a look at how we tell these stories because it reflects the modern day society we live in now. And we know how it feels to be a part of that story when it's not told. But I challenge filmmakers that if a film comes out like A Woman King, I think Lapita did exactly what I would do is put your money where your mouth is. She made a four hour documentary on why she chose not to do this role. She chose not to do the role. She didn't do the role and she made a really great educational documentary on that, which we will link the name of the documentary in the show notes. I was just I'm halfway through it in preparation for the show, which really talks about the atrocities inflicted on real people. Because what we have to remember is the woman king is a fictional story, but this fighting unit inflicted real harm on real people that do exist. And it's a legacy Right. That that is generations that still has a generational impact in the in the country of Nigeria. So I think that we as black people have to be complex enough to appreciate a piece of filmmaking for what it is, but then give our critical acclaim to the filmmakers that tell this story. Because part of my reckoning is to this whole cast and crew is, okay. all of y'all told this really idealized version of what this is to bring this to screen. Y'all made this choice. I hope it was so every single one of y'all, I'm gonna hold y'all personally accountable to open the door to other black people to be able to tell Mm -hmm. other stories. And I feel like all those actors, at least I know Viola Davis does that, right? She opens the door to, uh, first of all, thousands of nonprofits that help feed black and brown children, yeah. But they are opening the doors visually for other directors to be able to tell a different story. And I appreciate that. So I just feel like we got to find that balance, too. I think two things can exist at once. I think we can say that The Woman King was a great story. I think that those actors and actresses, well, actors, we don't say actresses anymore, but those actors were amazing actors. Yeah. And I think the story, if we're going to idealize to what we want to be as a people, yeah. I think that's absolutely the movies we need to start making, just like Wakanda forever. Like we've got real stories that we can yeah. make like a woman king that tell these stories. I think we also have to make room for truth telling in that too. Napita, you know, she took Lupita took that route and has offered that. Absolutely. So, you know what I mean? I think we have to find balance in that. I want to ask a little bit about the thing one of the things that stood out to me so much 
Because to me, it was like there was there were other battle scenes. There were one there was one part where they kind of go in for like you know there's the big battle and the attack against the um, opposing nation that are the kind of portrayed as the you know more of the more avaricious like slave slave traders. At one point, like as they're kind of sneaking into the town, I was like, and welcome to the Pirates of the Caribbean. Like there was one part where it was like they were kind of going through the town where all the drunkenness and revelry. I wish I could have said I wish I could have been there with you because I was like, oh my gosh, Andy would love this. But there's something, Andy, like. There's one part at the end that I lost my shit and I start to cry. I cry because there's so much in this movie that if we are into our spirituality, if we are into talking about how did the seeds of, you know, who do you do? It's movie elements because it was so that, though, good. Is it the Ojo like, or do we call them the Ojo? What do we tell the, them? Because you know I'm from Texas. I keep saying the Ojo. I, the, but there, it was the so Oyo, beautiful. The Oyo. The Oyo. Oyo especially the, the leader of which was like Dark this person. Dark and that, menacing. Yes. I'll take two. Oh my God! Because he was ride Andy. off on horseback. I don't care where it came from. Spain so, if someone, if yes. someone that studies, if someone that studies Afro-Cuban dance, like, oh my God! Like Shango is portrayed like this very often, like in the red, the like the kind of Arabic drape, the like sword. Like there was just so much beautiful imagery that you could just people could just be writing reports and treatises on the same way they did on. I'm just gonna say it because we don't want to spoil it too much, but. Girl, I uh, hope everyone has seen this movie by now. If you ain't, yeah, you that's true. If you ain't, let's not worry about alert. it. Okay, so but let's say like this: Viola Davis's character, the woman king, goes on a rescue mission. Some after doing this divination that she did not want to do, her sister made her do it. This is the reason I don't make Andy divine on shit. I don't divine on shit without Andy's permission. Now, our younger sisters, I have occasionally divined <laughs> that I have to go. I take that back, Andy. I have divine. divine you have divine. No like once or twice, I but I don't burden you. you with it because I know you don't want to hear this shit. And I'm like, is this some shit she don't know? She knows this. All right, I'm not gonna worry about this, and I shouldn't have did it anyway. Like, and when I do do that, I usually will confess to one of my other sisters. Like, I've divined on the younger ones. I had to confess to Andy once. I divined on Andy. <laughs> Like that I had to confess to like one of the younger sisters, but it was never anything so dangerous or so wild that like people didn't already know what was going on. So anyway, Viola Davis's sister did what I did in the beginning of me and Andy's past and kind of bullied her into doing some divination. And Viola Davis is the woman king character figures out some shit and she has to go on a rescue mission. I kind of call it and wrote about it as almost like rescuing her own inner child. She had, she had no choice. She had to do it, but it was so beautiful the way she realized the way she had to go on this mission because it was going to be dangerous. It was against the council and the direct orders of her beloved king. This is fucking up her political rise to being the woman king until she did. But she, it, but it was as though as she revealed why she had to go on the rescue mission, it was the most beautiful image of mothering. And she decides, you know what? I'm not going to involve the collective in this. This is my job. I got to go do it. So in the morning, she takes off running. On her no, on her don't mission, don't be mistaken because we we going to get them. We going to get them, but but well, also it also it, was this epic. But Andy, let me let me finish. Do I get this honor or be sacrificed? So I just want to and be sacrificed. But the choice. but the beautiful part was is she's running by herself to do this thing that she knows she's been told not to do. She looks back over her shoulder and there's like twenty of her warriors. Like they run it too. Like she was like, "Hey, what y'all doing?" They're like, "We just running like you." And you could do this like silently. She's like. Wait, where y'all running? They're like, wherever you running? Like, because this is how this works. It was so, it was such a beautiful moment that she was supported and she was going, she was going to rescue one of her fiercest warriors. And to me, the, the character that really represented, you know, it says her child, her inner child, she had to do it. And um, it was very beautiful. I wondered what you thought of that. And when she comes back victorious and she's been named the woman king, and I want to know what you thought about like that sequence, her going off on this rescue, coming back victorious, receiving the honor, and the ending of the movie, and what you you felt like the when final they, kind of beautiful symbols and messages were. When they showed up, well, I the one thing that struck me about that is like them showing up for her. It just reminds me how often, as leaders, we tell the teams that we lead to do things that we don't give ourselves grace to do for ourselves. Right. Take care of yourself. But I ain't taking care of me. You know, do what's right, no matter what I tell you, except when I tell you. Right. So I think it's those things where like them showing up for her is exactly what she should expect, because that's what she kind of trained her soldiers to do. I think what was really screwed up for me was I hated that the one person that's going to revere you 
right, is making you have this choice of either take this honor, which is uh, which is not based on the backs of these women, but also belong to these women who have suffered these great losses, or go show up for those women who are also the ones that are responsible for this honor that you're, you know what I mean? Like it was, it was very, but how often as women are we asked to do that? I used to, I used to work at this company and man, Ooh, I used to have these, it used to be this one girl on this team. I used to tell Hallie about this and I used to come work. I have to put family first. So I'm going to go home at five o'clock and blah, 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 blah. And I want to tell her like, your family is not different than my family. Like I like to put my family first too, but like for this to work, all of us have to kind of work as a community and a collective. And at that point I worked as a nonprofit where we, we were compelled to make things work for our job because of this bigger sense of community. Right. That's manipulation and fucked up. And it's a tactic that big nonprofit just started copying. It's a tactic. Big corporate. It's fucked up. So she realizes like this one person that's given me this honor at the same time you're using this thing. Right. That is supposed to be intrinsic and part of who I am to beat me over the head with. Isn't it? It's it's not only accused of manipulation. It's again why you need me so much. Because apparently you don't know enough to recognize this in yourself as a leader, that this is what you are doing. How dare you would ask me, you know, to pause to help you versus, you know, and at this point, you don't even know that this is my daughter. One of these people are my daughter. But like the other person is directly responsible for being the person that does divine for me. Right. That that has been my right hand, the one that I have been able to trust to deliver and actualize all of my dreams. And aspirations as women, how often are we asked to take this pedestal and to have everything you want? Step over the very women that have helped support you get here. That's going to be the first thing we're going to need you to do to show that you're ready for leadership. And it's I Ugh. see so many people not only in the working world have to do it, but in their marriages, in their relationships. Mm-hmm. You can be my equal. I'll revere you. Look at this. Look at this great reward you've gotten. Just step on everything you know to get it. Yeah, but just do what I say, just though. Just gut yourself. Like, <laughs> but still, you but still sacrifice like say. getting married, having children. You've been yeah. forcibly raped by our enemies. But I need yeah. you to do one last thing, though. Yeah. So, as, of course, she ran off into the trees, as I would do. Now, I understand that, that not asking your sisters to make that sacrifice, because I think that kind of is always a hard part for us. But I have learned in my 40s, and I've told other people this, man, let your sister show up. Yes. I think you talk about this all the time. Let her show up. Mm-hmm. Shit, now I got a credit card and a little means and some direction. <laughs> let me show up and help. I got some therapy and some healing now. You before can stay I, over here. Before <laughs> I just would have showed up and fucked things up. But <laughs> now that I'm helpful, yeah. like yeah. let us show up. And I think it also was a great, it was a great testament of let people show up for you. Oh, my God. Because Andy, again, going back to another Mississippi moment, that was not it was like you. How do I say this? Like your family being there for you. Sure. Yes. Like that is fortunately we were like that. Like we definitely had a family like where she got real bad, like where people kind of paratroop in to quote unquote, like if we needed them to, you know, come scoop us or whatever. Like, sure. But that what well, you going I'm you do it I'm gonna do it like I, like just that running scene it's one of the most beautiful scenes in the movies where she's truly running towards well I gotta I gotta do this by myself I can't I you know I, I don't want to in, involve the collective this is for me to do but man when they showed up running strong beside her like hey what's up yeah we yeah where are you going we going we going too yeah we don't know what you're doing but you're our girl so like so we go in and the with the ease with which she's like, well, y'all here. So let's y'all my people. So let's go. Andy is right for us. That has been a hard lesson in so many ways. I feel like for a long time in our lives, we were operating like, do we even deserve that? Like we don't we don't get that. Like we don't get to have that. Other people get to, quote unquote, have friends. Other people get to, quote unquote, have, you know, these the supports and relationship or get to believe and develop, enjoy a friendship. And we didn't. And so. Um, we're learning it. It just, you know, it took us a little while, but we got there. We're getting it. We understand the importance of it. But it was beautiful to see, which is why 
Andy and then my sister Kayla were so adamant that like I go see the movie and then we talk about it because if you are interested in spirituality, if the archetype of the dev- of the feminine is something that you're into, woman is warrior, seeing these beautiful, seeing us, our spirituality, the, the basis of a lot of our ATRs, being able to see it in this artistic, this beautiful representation, it is absolutely worth it. Andy, one final scene I want to talk about was in the very end. There's a dance of celebration among the Agoji, especially the young ones, and Viola Davis, um, the woman now crowned the woman king, now resplendent, exhausted, beautiful. But, you know, this is where we we see Viola, uh, the way so many of us enjoy seeing her, like unbelievably drippy, right? Like just just icy, drippy. She's just in her woman Happy king. Andrew's quote. After she done molly whopped a whole dock full of people. <laughs> she's so, she's, she's beautiful, but she's tired. <laughs> she came back home and she's sitting there tired watching the dance. It's that, and the feeling, and you could just, as a mother, that, you know, you sometimes you feel like you go on a battle for your children every day. I know Andy knows this. Like you're raising, you know, with these young princes, our, our beautiful black boys, like in this country is hard. Like there's some days like when Andy's got to go to the school when or come back to school. trying to get you, I feel like I just need to knock you out. But but it was that the this one scene as they pan in on her, it's that once your child has gone through something and you get to have an opportunity to sit, watch them dance, be healthy. They're there with you, like you've gone through something tough. You don't know how you're going to move forward. And then her daughter comes to her. She's tired. You could just tell she's so tired, but she's so happy to see her her child in community, happy, laughing. And the child comes up to her and asks her and says, "Mother, will you dance?" And she gets up tired. Oh God, I'm getting a little. It was a very beautiful scene. And since I'm falling apart, I just want to ask Andy what she thought about it. A lot of what I focused on with that scene is it celebrates because I didn't it took me a while to realize because it was a scene right before that where she talks, you know, they're at the altar and it's these interspersed altar scenes. And so they're talking about the soldiers that aren't there and she's and the daughter's pouring water on the altar. Um, And she comes in, she goes, yeah, she don't want that water. She wants this. And she puts liquor down for her friend. Yeah. So they're having this connection and moment where it's the first time. And, and it, all of you know, altars are already in our own homes, personal spaces. And Halakou has traveled internationally. But any time I've seen shared altars, it makes me like how special that place must be in a city of women, right? Where it's all their fallen yeah. soldiers that are together. Because when, when I see national monuments like that, I can imagine the reverence of that place. And we see them very differently because throughout the whole movie, all of these characters before you have not seen them in finery. Like, even as a general, like for her, like business casual when she's with the king is still in full armor. You haven't seen her with her hair combed out. And and I think this is so when I in, in a plus, let me just stop. Every frame of this movie, I was looking at jewelry. I was looking Stunning. at earrings. Yeah. I was looking at clothes. I was this is the I love seeing movies in the theater, but God damn it, this is why I love streaming because I need to pause and take screenshots. Yeah. And like then I want to look at it. Does it have texture? Like I get so lost in those visuals. So that bravo with this. But to see a character change through like their clothing. So like, right, they've, they've been fighting. So she's still bruised. She's still very purple, but she's wearing this very deep. I'm making this beaded necklace right now that's to Oya. And this is what I want to talk to you about. So I'm glad we're pausing to talk about it. The tunics that they wear, even as soldiers, are rainbow colored. Like they're maroon and kind of rainbow colored, which to me had this just amazing oh, yeah. Oya energy yeah. the whole time, right? The sword that she carries, even the movie poster you can see, is very mm-hmm. similar to the sword that she carries. So there's a lot of that, uh, you know, those big, you know, those big icons to Ifa spiritual spirituality. There's even a point in a meeting where, you know, one of her advisors tell her, you know, Ifa seeks light. Right. They, it will always see. And that means a lot of things. It doesn't always like, you know, good and evil. It's enlightenment. It will always seek to turn light on darkness. So it always seeks knowledge. Right. It's not a good and bad thing. But if seeks knowledge, it's always going to seek the why behind. Right. And so when I see them at the altar and she's in this resplendent, beautiful purple, which, you know, if you know this goddess, the rainbow is what she's known for. But this deep Beautiful purple is a huge 
homage to her role as the gatekeeper to the land of our ancestors. She is the one who allows our ancestors to walk and to be amongst us. So as they're having this really their first acknowledged mother-daughter moment after this huge success, right? It's at the altar where they're talking about people who they have lost and, you know, this shared, this time that they've lost. And so I think it's important, like, because you get emotional. I know the story behind dance and our relationship with our, with our mother. I think it's important to acknowledge mourning and grief. Because I think for the when you think about it, this is their first time publicly together acknowledging their relationship as mother and daughter, right? And the things that they have been through and having like this shared moment of like sisterhood that involves ancestry, right? And, and someone crossing over. So I think it has a lot to tell us about Oya's role in destruction from, you know, you can't have something new. You can't have... A new relationship. We can't build those things without first this destruction of these old ideas of who we were, right? Of the things that happened to us. And we then let step on those ashes and decide who we want to be moving forward. But we get to mourn, right? And so, yeah, even though she's battered and bruised, she's beautiful and she's resplendent. Those are her scars, Right. Those are always going to be the scars. Those are just the ones on the, her face. Like, let's not talk about the ones that are in her heart for things that were this relationship with her mom that she wish with her daughter that she wish she could have had. But that we all know she couldn't have. Right. Because she's an Okoje. She couldn't have do what kind of mother would she have been. Right. But yet to know that there was this person through no fault of her own, through this ferocious thing that happened to her that is out there in the world now. And she loves her so fiercely and she's had to do that from art. So it, yet yeah, it, it is a very idealized story. I think a lot of us as daughters wish we could have, we wish we could all have that dance. I am also interested in also seeing movies that tell about stories of girls like us, Q, right? Q that probably may not get that dance, but they still, I think that is still the story of all the soldiers that were around her, right? Um, for every daughter you find, there are going to be daughters that you don't. Um, so I think it was a beautiful moment. I know why it was so meaningful to you. Because I think I, this role, this her in this part reminds us a lot of our relationship that we have with our mom. I think it's also important for us as African-American women to know this is why it's so important we heal and I hate saying shit like mother wound because these are things that white people have adopted from us as indigenous <laughs> people, right? It's but funny to waste certain terms like I know, right? Like y'all want it because y'all just, just I don't want to say up. I, white people have fucked it up. I know I can't ever say but, manifest again because y'all love and light. But you get what I'm whatever saying. Whatever like, y'all are out there, that's yeah. why we have to do this shadow work and see these movies and have these conversations. Because I think there's going to be two sides of how we always see those things. Like, I know exactly that um, reaction that Hallie Q is having. But then I'm also, I'm also the little girl that still pushes away. Like, nah, nigga, I ain't forget. <laughs> like, I, I'm, I'm that daughter, too. So um, I am also here for those movies. So I think it depends on where you are. I think, oh and I think God. this is where, as moviegoers... Right, how like you? We need mm -hmm. to have that conversation around. There is room for so many different types of stories. I don't have yes. to knock on this story to also know that I too would raise my hand and this is where the ending for me would be a little bit different. And, yeah. we, and I think it's important to tell those stories as well too because those are also stories. Uh, resilient women. So, Andy, did Viola, everybody? In the if y'all out here giving out grants, we'll oh write some for you. We out here. Oh my god, life. I would love. I talk forever about this movie. Andy, did you did you stay long enough to see the part at the end? Um, the yeah. little, not the Easter egg part. People left. I was the last one in there because well, well, I was and, taking notes. And we was leaving, and I was amongst the because I really had to pee. I was amongst those black people in the aisle that was also tripping over ourselves to come back and see. So I wasn't sure if I caught all of it. Why don't you give us a recap? It was a really beautiful. It was another beautiful moment um so at this point you know our warrior homegirl um in my mind she was Dee. Dee. she reminded me very much of somebody that we grew up with down south i kept thinking of her as Dee. she was so beautiful so strong um but she she transitioned she passed she 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 fell in battle beautifully victoriously um is is oji 
Girl, what, in did the you end, just say she fell in battle? I done been to all the church meetings. What? And I have been to all of the social committee, the social chair meetings. And I have never once. In the good book of things we say when people pass along, pass away, yeah. have heard that one. Please what, that she fell in battle? Again. She fell yeah. in battle. She fell in battle. Beautiful, victorious, like strong, oh. tall, fell in battle. So in know, the yeah. end, her, oh, her. Keep on giving. In the, in the end, shout out to Black Girl Nerds um, and our love of words. And shout out to Crystal, who told us that words mean things. And me and Andy take that seriously. Um, uh, her her friend, companion, Sheila Atim Amenza goes to um, the ancestor altar. And she says to her, she says to her, she's pouring, she's making offerings. She's communing with her now as an ancestor. And I hope I get this line right. She said, and I wrote it down, and my fucked up chicken scratch in the dark, because your sister can't see, and I refuse to get new glasses, which I need to do. And she said, as you lived for, for us, we now live for you. And I thought it was so beautiful. It was so touching. And it was a quiet moment of reverence, acknowledging of a sister fallen and, and coming to her now as an ancestor and making offerings. And so I'm weepy, any, you know, like I'm weepy anyway. Y'all are welcome. But I thought if we call ourselves spiritualists, seers, which is if we are brown, if we are, if we practice any um, African traditional religion, spiritual practice, man, this is a good movie for us. Regardless of, you know, historical accuracy, accuracy or knowing that some things are, you know, slurred over or not paid attention to this is you know this is just showing some of the 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 origins of how we live as spiritual women now we acknowledge our ancestors we commune with them we when it's time for us to battle and go to war we stomp our feet we dance to generate energy to 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 get the gods to see us to acknowledge us to honor us to bless us we cleanse. We saw so many, you know, beautiful images, like in the bathhouse where we go to cleanse, <laughs> like where we go to cleanse, to cry. Um, it was so beautiful. There is so many reasons to see this movie. I don't know how quickly it's going to move to streaming. I really hope y'all to continue to support it. It was unbelievably beautiful, but that was the final scene, Andy. And I wanted to know what you thought about it because I thought it was a beautiful way to end the movie because Andy said, even earlier, but was that really the love story, Hallie? You like was that the love story between the two? You know, the two young lovers meeting at the gate, talking. You know, in between the veil, or was the love story of a mother and a daughter, or was it a love story about sister and sister? There are just so many beautiful themes and messages and archetypes, all of which, as you know, spiritualists or as hoodoos, or even if you come from different traditions, you don't come from uh, you don't come from a tradition that um, originates in the nations of Africa. It's still unbelievably beautiful and a work of art that you should see. Um, you will feel if you're if you like to come up here on this porch with us every week, you will love this movie. And you're gonna, as a black and brown woman, that's a spiritual being and creature, you're gonna feel seen in this movie. So I hope you. I hope, hope, hope that you uh, that you all go see it and enjoy it. And if you want to talk to me and Andy about it, go down to the show notes, check out our email address, um, tap it, get in touch with us on social media, tell us how you feel about it or or what you thought about it. We we loved it, Andy. I'm so glad you encouraged me to go see it. All right, we'll see y'all next time. 